We're going to talk about one of the most common ways that homes lose heating and cooling energy efficiency, and that is through duct leakage. On average, ducts leak 30%. So on average, people are losing 30% or their heating of their heating and cooling. So you kind of imagine you got this duct system that you're spending money on to send hot air through in the winter time, for example, and that money that you just spent on gas or electricity to power that furnace or that heat pump, you just spent $10 in. If you have 30% leakage, that $10 in is gonna equal $7 out. So losing the battle even before the air enters your home, not to mention other potential losses through things like lacks or gaps in the thermal barrier. If you wanna just gobble up as much of this home energy information as you possibly can, click the subscribe button below so that you'll get notified when new videos come out for you. So this trend of leakage can actually uh, further exasperate issues in airflow and in the home. So when leakage is happening, it matters where it is happening. So I want you to imagine you have this home and more of the leaks are happening on the supply side, right? So they're happening on the side of the duct system where air is being pushed. And for example, this return would be pulling 1,000 cubic feet per minute, so 1,000 CFM. And 300 CFM, so about a third of that, is leaking through the supplies in the attic. So that means only 700 CFM is being returned to the home. And what that does is it actually puts more pressure uh, in the attic because you're pushing air into the attic but you're creating a negative pressure situation in the home, right? Because you're pulling 1,000, but you're only replacing with 700. So you have negative pressure of 300 CFM. So you're actually, the home becomes kind of like a vacuum. It's pulling in air from the outside. And if it's cold outside, you're pulling in cool air from gaps and cracks and holes anywhere the air can get in. So that's an example of what happens when you have air leaking on the supply side. Let's look at what happens when you have air leaking on the return side. So let's say you have more holes in the return ducts than the supply ducts. In that case, you're only gonna be pulling 700 CFM from the air from the house, and the other 300 CFM is gonna come from the attic space or the crawl space, or where the, wherever that ducting system is located. You'll have 1,000 CFM returned to the house and what this does is this creates a negative pressure situation in the attic or the crawl space, wherever the duct system is located, and a positive pressure situation in the house. At this point, you're actually pushing more air into the house than you're pulling. That hot air that you spent money on is actually getting pushed out through the house. You're losing that air through any gap or crack you have in the building envelope. There's actually a bigger issue to understand when you have leaks in the return side. So the return side is where air is being pulled, right? So it's being pulled into the system and supplied into your home after it's heated or cooled. And, you know, if you have gaps or leaks in that return, it means you're pulling air from undesirable places. You're not pulling it from the house anymore. You're pulling it maybe from a crawl space, or this is a great example of some floorboards that have a pretty, reasonable gap in here and you're pulling air from the crawl space. Imagine you're pulling air from a place that doesn't have positive pressure, meaning a seal, and there's insulation there, or maybe you're pulling it through holes in the crawl space. In this case, you can see that the place where you're normally supposed to have a filter has a huge gap in it. And so instead of pulling air upstream from this filter, you're going to be pulling a lot of air from the crawl space. Um, some of it will probably pass right by this filter. You wonder why filters can get this dirty. It's not necessarily because your house has so much dust in it, although that might be the case. In most cases, it's actually because of where you are pulling the air from. So you wanna pay a lot of attention to that and be very cognizant of where your return is pulling air from. So a well-sealed return is gonna look like this. It's gonna have kind of a sealant that completely 
protects that airflow from being pulled from any gaps or cracks. It's another one that's completely sealed. Um, and so this is gonna create the kind of both pressure balance in your system that you're looking for, and also, of course, the indoor air quality that you need um, for your family. On the supply side, you're gonna be looking for visual gaps, of course, right? Holes in the ducting system, like these are really good examples. This is where air is being lost. But one other trick is that you can look for dirt on the insulation. If you see dirt on insulation, that's often gonna be a place where air is being pushed through the insulation, where there's gaps in the ducting below this insulation because that insulation ends up working as a filter. And over time, it'll basically turn dark from all the dust and dirt that gets passed through it. So this is what a well-sealed supply system looks like. You can see the connections are taped. The main connections are, we call this pookied or sealed. In fact, in this picture, we took the connections that are typically taped. We even installed expanding foam around the outside. Not super common, but a way to increase insulation and air sealing there. But you can basically get a sense that these systems are very, very, very well sealed and that there's a conscious attention to sealing those ducts when they're installed. So how do you tell if your ducts are leaky? You know, of course, you can visually inspect for ducts that are disconnected. You can look at the age and condition of the ducts and assess kind of whether they are likely leaky. You can see gaps often, and that's gonna be a place where error is obviously being lost. And then you can often look around connections between ducting and uh, you can see air moving. Well, you don't actually see the air moving, but you'll see kind of maybe a little bit of insulation blowing, some dust moving. If there's a leak, sometimes you can see like little pieces of tape maybe flapping in that air movement. But the truth is that the only true way to confirm whether a duck is leaky or not leaky is to perform a duck test. We talked about it earlier, on average, existing duct systems leak 30%. So you can use a device called a duct tester to push air into your ducting system. You seal off the other ends. You can even put a smoke machine at the end of the duct tester to identify where the leaks are. You're gonna wanna ideally get your leakage to 5% or less. When we would install brand new ducting systems, our goal would be to get less than 2%. Now, when you're evaluating a ducting system, you're ultimately gonna decide whether you wanna seal your existing system or to replace it. If the ducting is in very, very good condition, let's say it's all kind of silver foil, radiant foil, you can see it's three or five years old and it's still leaky, in those rare cases, I would consider sealing up that existing duct system. But if the ducts are black plastic, if they're old metal ducts, if there's any kind of indication that the insulation is not up to snuff, you're not gonna wanna bother with trying to duct tape uh, those existing old ducting systems. You're kinda gonna wanna just go with a blank slate from that point and replace your duct. So in most cases, if the duct system is very, very leaky, you're probably gonna wanna replace the whole thing. If it's very, very brand, kinda close to new, you may wanna consider uh, trying to seal those ducting systems, but most often replacing them is gonna be the best route. If you're totally into this home energy stuff like I am, click the subscribe button below so you'll get first access to some more free videos that I'll be posting.